Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of this third Sunday of Easter. Our Easter season continues, and it's a great pleasure to be with you. I'm Father Andy Pavlik, the pastor of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary here on the West Mesa of Albuquerque, and I am being assisted today by Deacon Michael Illerbrun from uh, our Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary over on Alameda. It truly is a joy to be with you as we continue our Easter journey. Let's begin by marking ourselves the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The journey continues, and today in our gospel, we hear about a very special journey on that first night or the first day of the week, that resurrection day. We're, we're kind of, our, our readings are very interesting because all throughout these first weeks, we kind of, we're not exactly in chronological order, but that's okay because the message comes through. We hear today about the road to Emmaus journey. It's a very special journey for all of us. So my friends, as we prepare to hear these readings and to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our constant need for God's love and mercy in our lives. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have, mercy. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you, staying in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commanded to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has been exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me 
the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch, David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, for he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O oh God. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you? O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as father him who judges impartially according to each one's work, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. 
That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had in, indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we, he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The journey continues, does it not? We hear in this wonderful Gospel today, really in all of our readings, the reality of a different community. We hear Peter sounding so strong in the Acts of the Apostles. We hear him in, his, in the first letter of Peter with the great theology of how this all fits together for so many of us. But it's in this Gospel today that we hear and see Jesus testing those early disciples. Okay, they're on their way to Emmaus, um, seven miles away from Jerusalem or so. And uh, first question, why does Jesus not reveal himself to them? I have this theory that he's testing them. He wants to see what the story is going to be. And so um, which disciples are they? We don't know. Not important. Because we are those two on the journey. We are the ones who are being tested by Jesus. And he goes through all of these things, you know, what, what, what's going on. And he almost seems like he's having fun with them, doesn't he? You know, kind of teasing them almost. What sorts of things are you talking about? What did we miss? You know, oh, no, no. And then, and then he gets very serious. Oh, how slow of heart to believe all that has been the prophets have spoke. Oh, how foolish you are. We never want to hear our God saying those things to us, but unfortunately it happens. But they realize in the breaking of the bread, 
he revealed himself to them and that's when their hearts were open. That's when they started beating themselves up. Were our hearts on fire burning within us as he was opening the scriptures to us? They were so empowered. They were so excited. The adrenaline must have been flowing so much. They ran the seven miles back to Jerusalem, revealed what they had experienced to the others in the upper room. And then they're like, yes, he is risen. This is really happening. And now we have to do something about it. The recounting of the stories over and over and over again is what our charge is. That's why we come together all throughout these Easter days and we take the stories over and over again and we share them. We share them with each other. We share them with our kids. We share them with our family members and we go out to a community, hopefully with that, that, that adrenaline flowing within us like it was in these two disciples that were on the road to Emmaus with Jesus. We are called to be there. We are called to share in the excitement of what that's all about. So this week, my friends, I invite you to think about how we have been called, just like those apostles, to do the work of Jesus so that when we get tested, and we will, we'll have the right answers for our God and for each other as we walk our journey in faith. My dear friends, I ask you,